Thank you, Jim. It's still with young people, although on a more somber note, a 17-year-old boy is shot and killed in a parking lot. A week later at his funeral, his 18-year-old best friend is shot and killed on the front steps of the church. It may sound like a script for a TV show like Law and Order, but it is the real life story of the Jamestown neighborhood of Rextail. And soon it's going to be a play at the Fringe Festival. How the community deals with those deaths and others like it are the basis of a play called Awake. It's currently in rehearsals. And our own Robin Brown is here to tell us more. Hi, Robin. Hi, good afternoon, Laura. Who are these young men? Uh, well, the two you mentioned are Eamon Beckles and Jamal Hem- Hemmings. They were killed in 2005, and actually Eamon was the teenager shot on the church steps. A lot of people remember that from the news because mm-hmm. it was so audacious, the idea of being shot down on a church step. Uh, also, the story of another young man shot to death in Toronto back in 2001 is also used in this play, Justin Shepard. Yeah. Uh, many people know that his mom, uh, Od- Odette, has become very active fighting against youth gun violence in the city. So how does this very serious uh, matter become a play? play for the Fringe Festival. Yeah, it seems like an odd leap, but um, it, it's a very interesting project, and the credit goes to Laura Mullen and Chris Tolley. They are the artistic directors of Expect Theatre, uh, which not only produces plays, but they've also run a lot of youth programs and events for young people in the Rexdale area. So what they did was they conducted hours and hours of interviews with people in Jamestown. And uh, from all those interviews, they put together this production called Awake, so really, there's nothing made up here. They didn't write any script. It's all real, although they do. Uh, they have hired professional actors to portray the real people. And they've kind of given it an interesting twist because uh, the whole play is set in a church. Oh. So uh, at the beginning, it almost replicates the idea of being at a funeral which certainly touches on some of these deaths. Uh, So the cast is rehearsing right now for the Fringe Festival, and earlier this week, I went to check it out. We're going to start with Nadia, and we're going to skip over the pastor's bit on page 17. So it'll go from Nadia to... Eamon's best friend was killed. I believe he died in his arms. Till this day, that case is not solved. They had a wake. Eamon went, and apparently some of his friend's family didn't take that too lightly, because I guess they were determined to get him to talk. And he wouldn't talk. I'm Beryl Bain. I'm playing Nadia and Shay. The first character, Nadia, is a woman who has, who is describing this, the experience of having lost her 18-year-old son. When you get shot, there is nothing glamorous about that stuff. We see movie stars like Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger getting shot and running 200 yards and jumping over buildings. I've seen people get shot. My name is Moy Nene. I'll be playing the characters Dwight and Andrew. And when they're on the floor in convulsions and losing all their bodily functions in front of you with blood coming out of them, with foam coming out of them, that's reality. Andrew, he was in the gangs. He did sell drugs or whatever you know, he needed to do or he felt he needed to do at that time. But he's left that life. He's been through the system. He's, he's been on both, you know, on both sides, meaning you know, being a perpetrator of it and being someone who's redeeming kids from that lifestyle. So he's, he offers a path. So he's a youth worker. My name's Chris Tolley, and I'm one of the co-writers and co-directors of Awake. My name is Laura Mullen, and I'm also a co-writer, co-director for Awake. I left to go to church because I wasn't thinking in my head that anything like this could happen, so... We have two moms that lost their sons. We have um, a youth worker who was a former gang member. We have a police officer, a rapper. We have somebody that has uh, had her boyfriend and many people in her lives in her life killed and is um, on medication for her trauma. We have a pastor who not only presides over the funeral, but he also speaks a little bit about how it affects him as a, as a person. When I started ministering back in Jamaica, I pastored one of the most violent areas in Kingston. Every week I would do probably two or three funerals. 90% if not more of these were around age 20. Everybody knows somebody who's been killed. Everybody has multiple friends, people in their family who have been killed. And you think, that this is in Toronto. This is crazy. This is so removed from my life, and I think removed from so many other people's lives, that I just had a lot of trouble wrapping my brain around that. It's like this wound that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Every time somebody else gets killed, you know, people have like post-traumatic stress disorder, it seems from what we can gather that, uh, you know, it's not often that young people experience their friends being killed. But in this community, it's, it's very commonplace. 
The people that we talked to, we were really lucky because a lot of them took major risks. Some of them security risks. Some of them um, were telling us things that, you know, we've had to be very careful to look after their their identities. Um, it's interesting because um, people would tell us that, you know, they don't want people knowing their business. And then they would tell stories about their moms being deported and being left at 15 to fend for themselves without much help about uh, being shot about shooting people, about losing their child to gun violence. Very intimate and personal things, but things that we felt that people really wanted to have heard. There's one line in the play, when you um, grow up in a war zone, you're going to grow up as a soldier. And I think that says a lot. There is personal responsibility, but when you're in, when you're in a war zone, it's a completely different game, I think. So, all right, you guys all ready to go? Yeah. Look. Five, six, seven. You know, the show is loosely set in a funeral and we are in a church and it certainly reminds us of the worst case scenario, which is that people die and that it happens all the time. But we, at the same time, I think are also trying to celebrate the community. We're not talking just about the negativity, but we're, we're celebrating this community because it, it deserves more help. It, it shouldn't be sort of pushed aside and forgotten about or just read about or heard about in the headlines. A lot of these different people, different communities, whether it's the police, uh, whether it's youth, whether it's mom, quite often there's not a lot of communication in amongst these groups. So how we're c kind of picturing this play is almost as if it was a town hall. Can you imagine if all these people got together and could actually talk to each other and tell each other their stories? So there's there's music too. There's some joy in this. Yeah, no, and, and it's not just you know it's it's set in a church and it's like a funeral, but it's not just a, a funeral. There's there's dancing, there's singing, there's you know like like Laura said, there is the celebration of the community as well. And what about the name Awake? Well, interesting because they they told me that they chose it for a, a few different reasons because it works on so many different levels. One, I mean, a funeral, uh, you know, a wake for a person who has died. So in a very literal uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also though they said the wake in in the water, you know, behind a boat, the rip effect um, that this violence, you know, has uh, beyond those directly affected. So beyond the, the young person who was killed, beyond the, the, the mother and the family. Um, and so there's that kind of wake ripple. And then it's also what they hope is an awakening of the whole issue um, of, of family violence, or not family violence, but of gun violence among youth. Um, and and where, how do these young people get to that point? Because not just about, you know, the guns being taken out and, right. and people being killed. But why do they feel the need to carry guns? Why are they joining the gangs? Why are they dealing drugs? You know, what are their lives situations? And as well as their own choices, because there's personal choice involved as well. Um, you know, why is it that they're at this point and it, and it doesn't seem to be getting better? Who will go see this play? Well, I think a lot of a lot of different people will go see this play. Um, you know, there's there's families. I, I mean, Chris was uh, mentioning that it seems so far removed from our lives, but this is Toronto. It is, isn't it? You know, it? it's not just Rexdale. It's not just Jamestown. This is these are people who you know, if if this 18 year old kid isn't shot, maybe he does something great for the community. You know. 10 years from now, five years from now, even next week. And so we lose out. I think we as a community lose out when, when, when these things happen, whether we know these people or not. So, I, I mean, I think it's really something for everybody to see. Um, and they're in rehearsals now. They've got a lot of work to do in the next few weeks. And uh, we're hoping to revisit the story also in a couple of weeks here on the program. Okay, sounds like a very talented young cast and a really interesting way to get at uh, such, a, such a problem in our society. Yeah, and it's something we only hear about in the headlines. This is a different way to look at it. Thank you for that, Robin. You're very welcome.